welcome to Tai Chi. Everybody ready? Let's warm up. Hands at our waist, turn your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Stretch your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Turn your shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Expand your chest. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Waist exercise. Turn at the hips and waist. Keep your arms closer to your head as you peek at the heel of your opposite foot. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Airplane, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touch toe. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Be careful. Shift your weight to the left foot. Good Tai Chi posture. Kick your right foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kick your butt. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
turn your knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Heisman, opening up your span, parallel feet, choose the right side. Cross and sit on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cross and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And short one. One, two, three, four, five. Other way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, just refreshing how we're going to be a <clears throat> good golden cockerel by using a shifting of weight and a counterbalancing. So right now we're at 50-50. And you can do it with me, and you don't have to do it on the same side that I'm doing, okay? So we're at 50-50, good Tai Chi posture, dropping the shoulder, middle finger to the side seam of your pants. As a result, our chest is slightly hollowed, our butt is tucked under, our head is straight up, our chin is slightly dipped down, but our glance is way out into infinity. To be a golden cockerel, we need to shift the weight to one side to bring up the foot that is weightless. Here we go. Shift the weight to one side, bring up the foot that has no weight, counterbalance with the other hand, and the other hand, same side, the hand pushes up, okay? Shift weight and push down, bring up. You can do it in a continuous motion, that would be great. You think through what you're doing. You're shifting your weight, centering your energy, pushing down and pulling up, being a golden cockerel safely. At the same time, building muscle strength, good stamina, good thought process, because everything that you do is synchronized and logical. Last set. Then we learned how to kick out. We have our feet apart. We're going to gather the energy and we're going to put the right hand on the outside because the right hand then needs to follow the kick of the right foot or with you left, left. Okay, left, left, right, right. So each time we, when we start, we're at 50-50, but we drain the weight off of one foot, gather it all in the other, and whatever foot that comes up, in my case it's the right foot, the right hand has to be on the outside because it then follows the kick, giving you a little bit more balance, whereas the other hand is countering it rather than coming out together like this. Okay, so this one I'll stand this way, okay? So let's kind of Open up our span and gather the energy, center the energy, shift the weight to the left, right hand on the outside, right foot coming up, kick out, right. Down, shift weight to the right, left hand on the outside, left foot coming up, kick out, left. Down, shift weight to the left, right hand, right foot coming up, kick out, right. And as you um, see, the kick is not straightforward, but on a diagonal, okay? And as much as possible, the kick is also led by the heel rather than the toe, okay? Okay, one more set. Okay, then we learned about our feet position and alignment. And we said that this is good, a Tai Chi is a, being a discipline, there are rules. So we said that for learning feet alignment, we can put our hands at our waist. We can still have that shoulder dropped. We can still tuck that butt. We can still keep our Tai Chi posture. 
We're at 50-50. We said that we could create a le capital letter T by turning our left foot to be the stem of the T. In order for us to move, we need to store the energy. We cannot move with, if you stand straight up, which is not Tai Chi posture, you cannot move because they're two weighted feet. We will trip and stumble. So what we need to do is we need to create a weightless foot. So this left foot is weightless and insubstantial by creating and sinking down on the back or right foot. Once you sink and you flex that knee, this right foot became, becomes heavier. It's obeying gravity. It's giving you stability. So from a T-step, we're going into an L stance. An L stance means you need to come out and to the side. But in one motion, you need to come out here on your heel, okay? So show me with your hand. We need to come out and to the side. But in one motion, which make, will make our left heel come right here, all right? Hands at your waist, T-stance. If you have that energy stored, you can, ex it can, you can um, generate the energy. But if there's no energy stored, there's nothing that's going to take you there, okay? T stance, out and to the side. Move the energy from the back or right foot all the way through your system, through the arms and down, bow stance. We said this was a bow stance because the bow is in the front, the arrow is in the back. We did mention also that the arrow in the back cannot be locked. Once it's locked, our Tai Chi posture is thrown off. But neither can it be dipped down because it's now a different posture, which is not Tai Chi. So we're going to have to raise it, but we're going to have to relax that back knee, uh, back knee of the back foot, and the knee of the front cannot go beyond the toe. So just give me a knee beyond the toe of the left foot. You see that your whole um, spine and, and weight shifted to the front. We don't want that to happen. We want to have a, create a center. Therefore, the knee can never go beyond the toe. That's the bow stance. After the bow stance, we said to sit down and sit back on an imaginary stool. We lifted the weight off of our front foot. So that's the foot that's insubstantial and can now move. We can twist now. When you twist that foot, when you plant down, it should be parallel to the line or on the line. The, le the right foot now can create the capital stem of the letter T, okay? We're doing the other side now, okay? The left foot comes out and to the side. The energy comes through the system from the flat of the foot all across, and we flatten down, and this is our bow stance. After the bow stance, we sit down and we sit back, not throwing our back back. We can twist on our right heel, firm down or root down, create the T, out and to the side, turn the hips and waist, move the energy, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, root down, obey gravity, create your T stance. Come out into the side L, turn the hips and waist, flatten down, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, twist step, T stance, L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot or twist step, firm down, T stance. L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, twist step. Firm down, T stance. L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Last one, sit back, sit down, twist step. Firm down, obey gravity, T stance. L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance, sit back, sit down, twist step, and T stance. So once we got that firm down, we added upper body movements to enhance our lower body. We learned how to part the wild horse's mane. 
We said that when we held the ball, it would help us to center ourselves. We, we remember that the top hand sits at chest level and the bottom hand sits two inches below your navel, which is your dantian, the center of gravity. This is the size of the ball that you hold. We also learned that we need to bring the ball in so that the elbows are not flaring out, okay? We also remember that the bottom hand always advanced. No matter what we do, the bottom hand advances. And each time we do that, when we advance, the other hand sits to the side as if it's holding yet another ball from the top. So that no, the hands never cross. Bottom hand advances. The other hand sits to the side holding another ball. Rotate that ball. Bottom hand advances this way, okay? Holding your ball, right hand on the bottom. Come out with the right, left hand to the side. Right hand on the top, left hand on the bottom. Left hand advances because it's on the bottom, holding the ball with the right. Left hand on the top, right hand two inches below. Bottom hand advances to part the wild horse's mane. Right hand on the top, left hand on the bottom. Bottom hand and left hand advances to go up the horse's mane. So that in essence is what the upper body is doing. Then we said we can now put it together and see how that works out. Then it becomes a little bit of a challenge. So we're on a T stance, let's set up our feet. We know that the left foot is going to advance. Therefore, the left hand has to go on the bottom, the right hand on the top. Does that make sense? Left foot is ready to go, left hand is on the bottom, and it's the bottom hand that advances. So we're correct, okay? So from a T stance, and our energy is built here, we're going to part the wild horse's mane on a bow stance. We're going to connect all the feet movements and connect it with our upper body. So here we go, right hand on the top, left hand on the bottom, storing the energy on our back or right foot. T stance, we're going to step out and to the side with an L on our heel, turn our hips and waist, bottom hand advantage, bottom, uh, front foot starts to go down as you're now in a bow stance. Let's do that again. T stance, T stance, L stance, turn the hips and waist, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Here it is. From a bow stance, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna sit back. We're gonna twist step. But when we twist, we need balance, so we're gonna form our ball at the same time we form our T stance. We're going to take an L stance now, out and to the side, bottom hand advances, energy moves through your system, out through the tips of your right fingers. Part the wild horse's mane. Sit back and sit down on that imaginary stool. Twist step. We want better balance, we want to center ourselves. We're firm down on the right, create a T and create that ball. Now you feel a little bit more secure. From a T stance, you come out into the side, turn the hips and waist, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, firm down on the left, create your ball for better centering. Out and to the side, L, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Then you check yourself and say, are my knees not beyond my toes? Is my left back leg, the knee not locked in so the energy can flow? Is my left hand holding the ball to the side of my thigh? Is my forward or right hand uh, motioned or moved into a position as if you're presenting a snack to a friend in front of you? If so, you need to sit back and sit down on that imaginary stool, creating an insubstantial right 
support that you can pivot on. Twist step, T stance, ball for better balance. L stance, turn the hips and waist, move the energy, flatten down, bow stance, part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot or twist step, firm down, ball for better balance on a T stance, step out with an L on the heel, bottom hand or right hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball on a T stance, okay? So, yes, you're making progress and maybe you feel that, you know, you don't have the patience and you wish you could get better, but all of this is your Tai Chi journey. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy what, what your body and your mind is taking you through and that's how you'll get better, okay? Over a period of time. We're training our body to understand what we've intaked visually and mentally and trying to uh, do it in the best way that your body can do for this time of your, in your, uh, your life, okay? And slowly it will get better. Any questions on how to part the wild horse's mane? Yeah, I think that you know you you understand and you can see that. But can you can you watch me and can you figure out if it's good or not? What's good about it? What's not good about it? Obviously, if I start it like this, my posture should not change. It should stay straight up. But in many cases, although this is an exaggeration, right here, I've shifted my Tai Chi posture to follow my hand. I need to straighten it out. My knee went way beyond my toe and I need to straighten it out. So there's that tendency but it's easy to see and maybe a little bit harder for you to correct yourself, okay? So in every case, we're parting the wild horse's mane, but every case we're taking our T stance, L stance, and our bow stance. Also note, take note that when I finalize my movement, my hips and waist are square to the outward hand. That's squared as far as I feel that I can um, manage, but this is not square, right? To correct that, I would have to come out and I would have to definitely turn my hips and waist square to the hand that's parting the wild horse's mane. Okay, so let's try that. So it takes a little, um, we, you know, I remember we warmed up our hips and ways. That's that stuff that we're trying to get at, okay? All right, let's try um, two sets, okay? T stance, let's kick it up a notch, holding your ball. Out and to the side, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Make sure the two hips are square to the, the left foot or the left hand. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, twist step, ball for better balance and centering, bring it in, out and to the side, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane, bow stance. And then you ask yourself, is my knee not beyond my toe? Is my, are my hips square to that uh, right hand or left, right foot? Sit back, sit down. This is our second set, twist step, T stance. L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance, squared and, and knees not locked in. Sit back, sit down, pivot, center on a T, out and to the side, L, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, let's end with holding a ball 
on a T stance and give me the, good, the best ball you can hold, best Tai Chi ball you can hold on a T stance, and I want to turn around and look at you, okay? Hold on. Very good, okay, very good, okay. We can relax. So we're learning to shift our weight. We have learned that no two feet can have weight because we'll stumble. So the principle is only the weightless or the insubstantial foot can advance or can move. We have to set it up correctly. But once we start to move, the energy exudes not from the upper body and the hands, but from gravity, from the base of your foot, all the way through your system, through your chest, through your shoulders, then out to your limbs. It cannot shortcut and twist out when the body is not even ready. So again, if I'm on a T stance and I have my energy stored because you see this foot flexed, once you see a person doing Tai Chi and the foot is not flexed, more than likely the feet are weighted too much. You need to create a shift of weight or an insubstantial foot. Therefore, the, the, the weighted foot takes a flex in the knee and you feel that gravity is taking care of you. It's very heavy. The energy comes from the flat of our foot all the way through the body, through the system, out through our hands and through our fingers. But in this case, I don't understand the premise. The energy jumped from here. I don't know how it got across here, but it went there. So visually, you can see that it's not just slower, but something grows within your system. And then it comes down ever so smoothly rather than jumping across, okay? So why is this? It's not just for beautification or for aesthetics but it is because we don't want to jar the knee. We want it to be a pleasant, smooth ride to make that excursion or part the wild horse's mane. Okay, so we're looking at the knees. We also said that if we did not come out into the side or an L stance and we just came straight out here, when we needed to go into a bow stance, there's not enough room to ease the joint of our knees. We're squished up, we're compacted. Therefore, it puts pressure on our knees. So we've said, from a T stance, we have to come out and to the side to give us this big room or this gap in which to turn nicely, okay? Oh, so a way of checking yourself is when you finally drop down, the spacing of your feet should be as broad as you are on the top. So if that's my stance, then can you see that this is not because I, my top is wider than what I can provide for my feet. So that's another way you can check, okay? Plus it feels very cramped, okay? But we don't want to set hab bad habits up to make them seem um, comfortable over a long period of time. All right. So let's see, what should we do now? Let's do cloud hands, okay? So we are learning Yang Ten form, which are 10 movements taken from the gold standard, which is Yang 24. But each of the forms, Yang 10, Yang 16, Yang 24, Yang 88, they have a different sequence, not only a shorter or a, a, a set number of movements. So we're gonna part the wild horse's mane and we're gonna learn how to get into cloud hands, okay? So let's just do it first and then kind of break it down afterwards, okay? So we're on a T stance. Okay, here we go. Holding our ball, we're gonna part the wild horse's mane. Step out on an L, turn the hips and waist, 
square to the outward hand, part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, obey gravity, root down, T stance, holding your ball. Take an L stance, bottom hand advances, energy goes to the system, out to the tips of your right fingers. In a bow stance to get into cloud hands, we flip the forward hand so we no longer see the palm. So can you do that? We're at three o'clock on a clock and where the palm is facing that three. The left or back hand joins it, but the palm is, is facing you. So we're in the three o'clock number position. We're in a bow stance. From a bow stance, we want to sit down and sit back and eventually get into the nine o'clock position. Okay, so opposite from three, we're into nine o'clock. Listen carefully and do it. Sit back, sit down, pivot on the right foot. We're at 12 o'clock. There's a stem of the left hand and the right hand is mm, by your Danton, I'd say. How do we get out to nine? You use your left heel and you swing and turn your hips and waist. Is that nine? But how do you stabilize yourself? You flip your hand so that the right hand is up higher and you close your feet. Turn the hips and waist and what do you get to? 12 o'clock. But we want to get out to three o'clock. We turn our hips and waist a little bit more. There's three, but two things happen. We flip the hand and what? Open the feet. Move the hips and waist, 12 o'clock. What happens? Nine o'clock. We only flip the hands. Move the hips and waist, because the hands can't move by themselves. The hips and waist have to drive them. Three o'clock, two things happen. We flip the hands, we close the feet. Bring you to 12. Going out to nine, two things happen. What? Change the hands and open the feet. Move the hips and waist to 12. Turn the hips and waist to three. But three o'clock, we can't, we have to finish, we have to go into another movement, so we only flip the hands. But at 12 o'clock, we turn ourselves into a what? Golden cock crawl. Push down, pull up. And the other side, push up and push down. And then we kick out, okay? So can you see that that's kind of kind of neat, right? You set yourself up to get into First, parting of the wild horse's mane. You finish parting of the wild horse's mane and you set yourself up to be floating clouds. Then you set yourself up after cloud hands to be a golden cockerel on both sides and then a kick out. So if you think, with, if you process this whole thing with me, I think there are four movements that we can, we've just learned or tried to learn or experience right now. 10 movements, four, it's not even halfway through the session and we're almost at halfway, okay? But that's the nature of Tai Chi. We can skim the surface and get a bird's eye view and there's lots more to dig down deeper and refine, okay? And use your body in the most efficient way rather than being torn and stressed because we're not weightless, we're not shifting our weight and things are just getting complicated. So we want to come to class with a sense of calmness, increase that calmness as we learn Tai Chi, leave class with more calmness. We want to address our core all the time and we want to be able to use our hips and waist, not our hands. Our hands are not there for Tai Chi. They're there because they're joined to us by our core. We want to be able to use what's central to us. We want to create calmness. We want to be able to use our core. We want to be better able to center ourselves, both physically and mentally. And that's the process 
of your Tai Chi journey. Okay, I think I like that. Let's, let's kind of perfect how we can do parting of the wild horse's mane to lead us into cloud hands and get out of cloud hands by being a golden cockle and kicking out. Okay, follow? All right. Good Tai Chi posture, dropping the shoulders, T stance. Right hand on the top, left hand on the bottom, good size of your ball. Weighting down on the back or left, uh, uh, right foot. We're going to part the wild horse's mane. T stance, out into the side, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Bow stance. Sit back and sit down on that imaginary stool. Twist step. Firm down, T stance, center with the ball. Step out and to the side, L stance, move the energy, bottom hand advances, part the wild horse's mane. We are at three o'clock. We want to get into cloud hands. Flip the forward hand so you no longer see the palm. Join it with the left or back hand where you can see the palm. We're in a bow stance. We want to get out to the nine o'clock, but here's what we do. We keep our Tai Chi pattern for our feet. From a bow stance, we sit down and we sit back, creating an insubstantial front foot. We're gonna twist it, that the insubstantial foot, and we get to 12 o'clock. A stem of the left, and a brushing of the right. 12 o'clock, halfway there. We're going to use our left heel and pivot out. Our hands got there, our foot got there, but we have to stabilize. We're going to have to flip the hands and join the feet. Move the hips and waist to 12 o'clock. What happens at three? Two things. Flip the hands, open the feet. 12 o'clock. We're going to get out to the nine, but we're only going to flip the hands. Moving the hips and waist gets us to 12, also gets us to three, but two things happen. Flip the hands, close the feet. 12 o'clock, nine o'clock, two things happen. Flip the hands, Open the feet, 12 o'clock. But at three o'clock, we only flip the hands. We shift our weight at 12 to the left. We come up as a golden cockerel, okay? Down, shift weight to the right, up, golden cockerel. Down, gonna gather the energy and we're gonna kick out with our right Gather the energy, right hand on the outside of the cross, right foot coming up, kick out, right. Down, left hand on the outside, left foot coming up, kick out, left. Holding our ball on a T stance. Okay, let's finish it up. Let's see what's entailed for us. We're on a bow stan uh, T stance, we're holding our ball. We're gonna step out on an L, where the bottom hand is going to advance and ward off our opponent by pushing him out using our forearm. Then we're going to turn the hips and waist and make your hands staggered, and we're going to sit down and sit back. Sit down, sit back as if to grasp the bird's tail. Then we're going to contact at our wrists, turn at our hips and waist from the middle, push the energy through. Separate the energy and roll back and sit down. That's what the choreograph says, that from a bow stance, you have to sit down and you have to sit back. Push him back out. Do the other side. Sit back and sit down. Twist, step. Root down or to gravity, holding your ball. We're going to ward off our opponent on the left side now, okay? This is a T. Out into the side, L, bottom hand, Wards off your opponent by pushing him out using your forearm. Turn the hips and waist, reposition the hands, and we're going to sit down and sit back. Use our hips and waist to turn back. Contact at our wrists, 
center of the body, push the energy through as if to grasp the bird's tail, then push the opponent back out one last time. Twist step, open step, in step, embrace the tiger, right hand on the inside of the cross, move over, pull him up, push him closer to you, push him away. Drop your shoulders, flex your knees as you now lift the left heel off the ground, or totally off, and you close your form. Okay, so that was a, like a sneak preview into the remaining movements, but you can see that if you know your feet alignment really well, then you will then concentrate and enhance it using your upper body. You also found out that Tai Chi is martial arts based. All movements are taken from the hard, the hardness or the, the force of martial arts, but streamlined in a way to make it a, a meditative dance. Okay? But the intention of each of the movement still rides heavily on martial arts base. So you say, well, you know, I'm not in Tai Chi to develop muscles, and I don't want to be a bodybuilder, but you know, some of that will come with the territory because you are doing martial arts in a graceful way. So it's a plus, okay? Okay, let's move on to something else now. Okay, so all of these movements, are, we're taking a bird's eye view. We're trying to see how Tai Chi can be done in a logical way and a very systematic, in a patterned way. So if you know the patterns, more than likely, it'll be easier as we uh, get into harder movements. So going back now, how do you commence? Every time you do a yang style Tai Chi, no matter what form, the commencing form is always the same. And it's relatively easy, but if you think about it, it can be very difficult. In a beginning part of any type of uh, performance, whether it be sports, whether it be in music, or in Tai Chi, that beginning first thing that you do, if done correctly, will more than likely color, color your whole piece, your whole performance. But if not done super well, you may feel something a little bothered by it and it'll color your, your performance. So I'm not saying that you have to do it exactly right in the few minutes that you're learning it, but we'll get to that. So to commence and we begin, we need good Tai Chi posture. So do that right now, dropping your shoulders, tucking your butt, hollowing out your chest, chin slightly down, as if you were a puppet or a semi-rag doll held up to the middle of your skull by a thread. Good thoughts going on in your mind, tongue on your palate. When we commence, we're at 50-50. We shift weight to our right foot, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 allows us to open, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Hands rotate to the middle of our thighs. We elevate both hands together using our core to bring it up as if we're drawing up water. At shoulder level, we reverse the process. We push down that water by using our core, dropping our shoulders, flexing our knees. That is commencing form. Then we form our ball on a T stance in some cases, okay? All right, let's go back to commencing form. So we said that it's relatively simple, but the simplicity is deceiving because you're at 50-50 and you're shifting weight to drain the weight off of the left foot to allow it to move. But all the time we're doing this is slow and we're thinking it through. 
and to lift it off gracefully, and we don't want to just lift it off and pop it down. We want to go with some finesse. So usually how you come up is usually how you go back down. So if you can bear with me, if I come up slowly and get to my toe and lift off, I have to set my toe down and then I have to gradually come down back to 50-50, okay? So let's try to do that. When we rotate our hands to the middle, so I opened and I say rotate your hands to the middle of the thighs, that's all it is, you're coming forward. Remember we did this exercise here, so we're gonna use that. We're gonna use the core, not just use our hand and do nothing with the core. We're using the core to bring it in. I'm exaggerating to show you, okay? So when you bring your hands to the middle of your thighs, we don't just flip our hands up, down and up, okay? We don't just do this, but we, we use our core, we employ our core. So we come to this point, the core helps us to bring it up and we're thinking through. And if it's water that we're drawing up, it's gonna be pretty difficult. At shoulder level, we reverse. We drop the shoulders, we flex the knees, we push down that water, okay? So that's what we're getting at. It's not just merely hands, it's, it's not merely hand, but it has to do something with building that core to make us more strong, to make us stronger and more powerful, okay? Good Tai Chi posture, dropping the shoulders, tucking the butt, hollowing the chest, tongue on our palate, head straight up, good thoughts going on. Commencing form, 50-50, shift the weight, 60, 70, to the right, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Hands rotate to the middle. Take a deep breath in as we elevate and drop that water using our core, shoulder level, reverse, drop the shoulders, flex the knees, push down the water. One more time, bring the foot in closer. Good Tai Chi posture, 50-50. Shift weight to the right, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Rotate, deep breath, elevate. Use your mind, use your core, shoulder level. Drop the shoulders, flex the knees. Let gravity take you back down, okay? Let's start from here. Leaving that span, rotate to the middle of the thighs, take a deep breath in, diaphragmatic breathing, not long. Drop yourselves down to make yourself small. One more time. Okay, and you don't wanna be stiff up like this now because you've already commenced, so the energy, the knees are soft. Hands rotate to the middle of the thighs. Take a deep breath in through your diaphragm as you elevate, shoulder level, reverse the process, and exhale. One more time. Start this way from the beginning, 50-50. Shift weight to the right, 60, 70, 80, 90. Off the ground, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Hands rotate to the middle. Deep breath in as we elevate and draw up that water. Shoulder level, drop your shoulders, flex your knees, push down the water. Movement number two, leave the left hand in the center, right hand rises up higher, open the palms to the ceiling. Bring the right hand to your ear as you glance. Turn your head and neck, meet the hands in the middle, Push the top hand forward, bring the bottom hand back to your hip. Repulsing of the monkey. Center the right hand, left hand rises up higher, glancing at it, open the palms to the ceiling, bring the back or left hand to the ear, turn the head and neck, meet the hands in the middle, push and pull, repulsing of the monkey. A drill. Center, higher, glance, ear, turn, meet, slide, repulse the monkey. Center, higher, glance, ear, turn, meet, 
slide, center, higher, glance, ear, turn, meet, slide, center, higher, glance, ear, turn, meet, slide. Holding your ball on a T stance, part the wild horse's mane. Step out on an L, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot or twist step. You need better balance and centering, so you're going to create a T and a ball. You're going to step out and to the side, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. From here, we're at 3 o'clock, let's be clouds. Flip the forward hand, no longer see the palm. Join it with the back hand, you can see the palm. We want to get out to the 9 o'clock. Here's how. Sit back, sit down, pivot that right heel, 12 o'clock. Pivot on the left heel and 9 o'clock. Flip the hands, close the feet. 12 o'clock, stem in a cup, use your hips and waist to turn. 3 o'clock, two things happen. Flip the hand, open the feet. 12 o'clock, stem cup. 9 o'clock, only one thing happens. So flip the hand. 12 o'clock, stem cup. Turn your hips and waist to get to 3. Two things happen. Flip the hands, close the feet. 9 o'clock, two things happen. Flip the hands, open the feet. At 3 o'clock, only one thing happens because at 12 o'clock, from cloud hands, we go into a golden cock roll. And the other side. And we're going to kick out. Gather the energy, right hand on the outside, right kick. Down, left hand on the outside, left foot ready to go, kick out, left, holding our ball on a T stance. Okay, so um, we did a lot of work, we introduced a lot of things. I think your body is trying to stay in touch with what you're trying to make it do, so we want to teach, it the, teach our body to move in the correct way, so good to hear, good to see, good to try, good to understand the reasoning of why we take certain formation. In cloud hands, it's the only movement in Yang Ten where we're walking sideways. But walking sideways can be a challenge too, like a crab in that only the toed foot can lead the movement or can initiate movement. So you can never be on your heel to start a movement or sub-movement. Therefore, the shifting of weight becomes important. This is firm down, this has to come up or be weightless to then be allowed to move and hit the ground with the toe. It is almost like playing the piano with your fingers and pressing down on the keys. You use your tips of your finger rather than your heel or palm, okay? So in doing crab, a crab walk or cloud hands, you can see that some of the other muscles are now being addressed, not just the T-step, uh, L stance, bow stance, sit back, sit down, which are still important. So we're trying to capitalize on all different movements and try to make some of those um, tired, uh, not looked at muscles, kind of rev them up and pep them up a little bit better. And over time, although you may feel that ache, hopefully it's a good ache that kind of pushes you on to say, hey, this is where I should be in being more flexible, okay? Any questions? Yep, Sheila. I would say there are degrees of being locked. They're usually flexed, but right away from what we have covered, 
perhaps you can have experienced a little bit of a locking of that knee. But not at the beginning. Yeah, but you said it, but not as if it were rigid. There is some softness to it, okay? Even with golden cockerel, you're trying to keep your what? That one that drills down, it's going to feel a little bit stiffer, okay? But not to the point of you cannot move it at all. There is some give to it, okay? So good question, and I think it applies even to us. I'm saying, oh, I can't lock that knee. I have to practice what I preach, you know? So good, okay. So yang style tai chi, the characteristic is roundedness, softness, and nonstop. And whenever we're elevating, there is not the stiffness in our joint, but there is always a slight bend to the elbow. So we'll talk more about that. So if there's a slight bend in the elbow, and I don't want to talk about a slight bend in here because there should not be a dip. But if there's a softness in the knee, then that is good Tai Chi, okay? So just to kind of uh, emphasize that point, when I part the horse's mane, I'm going up his mane in that formation and not this formation where I'm locking my joint. If this guy is locked, more than likely, this uh, pressure on the front is going to uh, work on my knee to pressure and make it too straight. And that's not good, okay? So softness all about us, not just the upper body, even the bottom, okay? And in cloud hands, right? Cloud hands is rounded, okay? You're, you're continually making circles and spirals. From a martial arts standpoint, you want to get your opponent's joints locked. Get it this way, this way, this way. If some, your hand is this way and he turns you, you might be able to weasel away from it. But we're not learning to fight, but we're learning to move our body. So maybe someday you're walking down and you get a, you, you slip. And if you do this, or if you fall down this way, what happens? Clack, 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 clack. Versus if you fall down, bent, break the fall, don't break any joints. So um, I was just laughing to myself, but we won't teach you how to, um, <laughs> we won't get into that. <laughs> All right, you get it. All right, we're learning Tai Chi, but good, good example, good thinking as usual.